Lasers seem like mystical high-tech creations, but they've actually been around for over half a century. In present day, lasers are used by the likes of doctors, Mr. Beast, engineers, and even the most well-known animated astronaut of all time, Buzz Lightyear. I'm gonna teach that boy a lesson. Yeah, sure, you go ahead. Melt him with your scary laser. <laughs> he warned you, it's extremely dangerous. So make sure to subscribe to the channel or Buzz is coming for you next. The story of how these concentrated beams of light are made is a fascinating tale filled with quantum leaps, legal battles, and a healthy dose of persistence. Our journey starts back in 1917, when Albert Einstein first proposed that if you pump enough energy into an atom, you can trigger a cascade of identical particles of light. Flash forward four decades, and physicists built on Einstein's theory to create the first measure, which means microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Their 1958 breakthrough paved the way for lasers, but they didn't realize the world-changing potential of their invention. As Towns later put it, none of us who worked on the first masers imagined how many uses there might eventually be. In 1960, physicist Theodore Maiman became the first to build a working laser, which means light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. He created this laser using a bright pink ruby rod, he excited atoms in the ruby with bursts from a powerful xenon flash lamp, triggering them to release particles of identical red light. Once the genie was out of the bottle, lasers captured the public imagination. In 1964's Goldfinger, James Bond narrowly escapes death by industrial laser. Real-world applications quickly followed, with lasers used for everything from grocery store scanners to manufacturing to eye surgery. Today, lasers form the backbone of digital communications, carrying vast amounts of data through fiber optic cables crisscrossing the globe. So how do you make one of these brilliant beams? The process starts simply enough. You need a gain medium, something that can amplify light. Next, you need an energy source to pump it full of excitement. The medium is the heart of the laser, usually a solid crystal, liquid dye, gas, or semiconductor. Ruby crystals were used in the earliest models, though neodymium doped yttrium aluminum garnet. Try saying that five times fast. Dominates today's high-powered solid-state lasers. Now it's time to excite things. Electrical discharges, flash lamps, or even other lasers can pump atoms in the medium into higher energy states. Imagine shifting excited electrons up the rungs of an atomic ladder. But this spontaneous emission alone isn't enough to make a laser beam. For that, we need stimulated emission, an atomic chain reaction where one photon triggers another, which triggers another, rapidly amplifying the light. It works like this. An incoming photon interacts with an excited electron, stimulating it to fall back to a lower energy level and spit out a second identical photon. These two photons zoom through the medium, triggering more light-releasing reactions. Before you know it, a cascade of photons floods through the gain medium, lined up like soldiers marching in lockstep. Mirrors at each end of the laser cavity bounce the photons back and forth, further amplifying the light with each pass. One mirror is only partially reflective, allowing some photons to escape as the brilliantly concentrated laser beam. You might think such a clever device emerged from an elaborate laboratory filled with bubbling vials and crackling Tesla coils. In reality, Theodore Maiman constructed the first laser using store-bought parts, including a ruby rod ordered from a supplier in Boston and mirrors from a local department store. His makeshift creation still succeeded in spitting out a pulsing red laser beam. That being said, kids, don't try this without parental supervision. Once the basic components were in place, engineers got busy honing and perfecting lasers for various applications. Developments like chirped pulse amplification allowed construction of ultra-short yet intensely powerful laser pulses, this Nobel Prize-winning advancement enabled advances in laser eye surgery, materials processing, and other areas. Of course, epic journeys often encounter obstacles along the way. Laser pioneers spent decades battling over patents and royalties. Gordon Gould, who coined the word laser, famously engaged in a 30-year legal fight to gain recognition for his early theoretical work. There were technical challenges to overcome, too. Early high-powered lasers tended to damage their internal components. New cooling techniques were required to prevent the beams from burning up their own equipment. Lasers have advanced so much that lasers are now a multi-billion dollar industry. The laser zoomed far beyond Maiman's ruby-red prototype, 
advancing into exotic realms like X-ray lasers for nuclear research and particle accelerators searching for the Higgs boson. Defense agencies continue work on laser weaponry, though we're thankfully still far from the planet-zapping capabilities of Bond villains or the Empire in Star Wars. The future remains bright for laser technology. New frontiers are constantly being explored, including using ultra-fast lasers to study molecular dynamics and engineer new pharmaceuticals. Other research targets next-generation semiconductor materials to improve optical computers and telecommunications. There's something poetic about the fact that, at their core, lasers simply amplify and concentrate the natural light of our world. From the sun that provides life to Earth to the campfires that illuminated humanity's first footsteps, light has always captivated our imagination. Lasers have transformed this ancient fascination into a foundation of the modern world. Speaking of a multi-billion dollar industry, check out this video to learn how the $8.2 trillion floating around our globe were made.